James Gunn did this big old interview recently. And this interview was a mixture of things. Primarily, it was for uh, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. Um, the movie is coming out next month. Actually, exactly one month from now. And, um, you know, this movie is going to be about a lot of different things. You know, so I, I tried to skip over the... It's not really spoilery, but just things that, like, probably would affect your perception of the movie. Um, or at least I tried to steer away from a lot of that in this. But um, there were a couple things that James Gunn said that I was like, mm, we want to talk about that. We need to talk about this. So, um, again, this is on his press tour for Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. Um, and he talks a little bit about Superman and stuff like that, too. Um, but um, here was his interview here. And let's see. There was what's the first thing he ended up saying? I didn't want to bore y'all with this whole big it's a long article long interview but one thing uh that was brought up was um is chris pratt aka star lord ever gonna come back would he be willing to come back and play the role he says now if you're saying to me chris pratt the actor do i want to reprise my role as Pre peter quill and is there mileage left in that character in the character and do i have the bandwidth or headspace for that I do. I'd be interested in playing the character again. So that's this. Now, I, I, I want to I didn't want to read his previous comment, basically. But let me just kind of give you a little context there. Basically, he was also saying that, like, look, there's a lot of talk about, like, how this movie is going to end or whatever. And he was like, I don't want to feed into any bit of the speculation of maybe peter's gonna die maybe he's not gonna die the character they can do whatever they want with the character he was just basically saying at the end of the day i'm still open to coming back as star lord and you know what i'm fine with that because i actually think he's really good as star lord i thought you know especially in the first uh movie he was fantastic in that role um so i'm here for that uh if that's what he wants to do um Let's see. There was some more here. Let's move on. Uh, Gun was uh, taken back. Oh, y'all got to I like this. Gun was taken back by the ending of 2019's Avengers Endgame, which had Chris Hemsworth's Thor going off with the Guardians, a plot point that clashed with his already written Guardians 3 uh, draft. He says they chose to have that editing, that ending in editing, and I didn't think it was going to be in there. Ooh. So I just wanted to highlight that for y'all real quick, because, you know, a long time ago, when there was a certain campaign going on, you know, when people were under the impression that when post-production is wrapped when filming is done, Marvel can't change no endings. Marvel can't do something different with the movie once it's done in production. And I used to say multiple times, Marvel can do whatever they want. Marvel can edit and change things all the way to the very last minute. And I just wanted to make sure I highlighted yet again an example of the fact that James Gunn had a whole script for volume three and how volume three was going to happen. But Marvel was like, nah, we going to do something else. And here's the thing. James Gunn already saw what they were doing with Endgame. He was like, oh, okay. I see y'all. Cool. And then in editing later, after the fact, so this is when James Gunn was gone. He was doing Suicide Squad. He was out. He was whatever. They changed it in editing. They changed the whole ending. And what he's talking about is basically Thor going off with the Guardians. Because James Gunn was like, that wasn't in my first script. That's not what I gave y'all. That's not what... That's not how that's supposed to transition. Marvel made that decision after post-production to change the ending. Why? 
because Marvel can do whatever they want. So whenever you see something put on screen, it's because decisions were made. And usually, as these directors tell you, Marvel will do things all the way to the last minute. Just letting y'all know how the industry works. I'm letting y'all know how Marvel works. So back when I was telling y'all that Marvel had the chance, Marvel had many opportunities to do things. I had all these people, but E-Man, they, the production is done. They're not doing any more reshoots, E-Man. They can't recast. They, they can't change the ending, E-Man. What are you talking about? I know what I'm talking about. And I say that humbly because I sit here and I report what these other people that work for Marvel tell you. I don't make this stuff up. I'll tell you when I'm thinking about something. I'll tell you if I'm just pontificating. I will let y'all know that. But if it comes from these people directly, I'm going to let y'all know that too. I'm going to let you know. I'm going to let him finish. He said, they chose to have that ending in editing. And I didn't think it was going to be there, be in there. So I didn't have much say in what was in Endgame. And then it came out and I was like, what the heck am I going to do? That's when Marvel Studios president, Kevin Foggy, told me Taika's going to do Thor and we'll have the Guardians in it. I said, oh, thank God. To be completely honest, Thor was never going to be in this movie, Guardians 3. He was never going to be in there. Taika took a bullet for me because I was not going to have Thor in it. I was just going to start up and there's no Thor. Mm. Mm -mm. So, oh, Taika took a bullet for you, all right. <laughs> Taika took a big bullet. Taika, Taika, Taika landed on a grenade. Somebody just, who, oh, we're not going to talk about Thor 4. But the whole thing about Thor going with the Guardians and then the Guardians leaving, all of that was Marvel's decision. Not the director slash writer. Nope, none of that. Marvel. Kevin Feige came in and was like, all right, we're going to do this. We're going to do it. They, Marvel shuffles all the pieces whenever, however they want all the time. All the time. Just remember that. Just, just, just remember that. Um. Oh, okay. Now, this is my personal gripe. Y'all know I got a gripe with this. I talk to y'all about this all the time. And now James Gunn is out here talking about it. So I got to talk about it, too. <sighs> Here's his next quote. I think there is such a thing as superhero fatigue. I think it doesn't have anything to do with superheroes. It has to do with the kind of stories that get to be told. Uh, and if you lose your eye on the ball, which is character. We love Superman. We love Batman. We love Iron Man because they, these incredible characters that we have in our hearts. And if it becomes just a bunch of nonsense on screen, it gets really boring. But I get fatigued by most spectacle films, by the grind of not having an emotionally grounded story. It doesn't have anything to do with whether they're superhero movies or not. If you don't have a story at the base of it, just watching things bash each other, uh, bash uh, each other, no matter how clever those bashing moments are, no matter how clever the designs of the VFX are, it just gets fatiguing. And I think that's very, very real. So I'm going to say he just described Black Adam. In my opinion, he just described everything that you saw in Black Adam. Great action. Black Adam had great action. I love the action. But the story and the characters, whack. And I like how he kept contradicting himself, saying, yeah, I believe in superhero fatigue, but I don't think it has anything to do with superheroes. Like, wait, Then it's just fatigue. It's fatigue of bad stories. That is a thing. That is what I've been telling y'all. Superhero movie fatigue is never going to be a real thing. You know why? 
because you never hear people say, I'm tired of great superhero movies. People only talk about it when the movies start to suck. When you have a Thor 4, then an Ant-Man 3, then a Black Adam, then a Shazam 2. Now there's fatigue because you're tired of crappy movies. But when you had Infinity War and you had Black Panther and you had uh, Endgame, y'all didn't say two words about fatigue. When Spider-Man No Way Home came out, y'all didn't say two peeps about fatigue. So y'all, everybody, everybody that talks about comic book or superhero fatigue can miss me with that nonsense. Because it's all good when the movies are hitting. But when the movies suck, now all of a sudden, I'm so tired of these movies. No, you're not. You're tired of mediocrity. You're tired of Venom 2. You're tired of Morbius. We don't like seeing crappy movie after crappy movie after crappy movie. Do y'all know how many terrible horror movies there are? Do y'all know how many terrible rom-com movies come out and nobody cares about them? I ain't never heard of rom-com fatigue, horror movie fatigue. These things come out a dime a dozen and they be terrible. And nobody watches them and nobody has fatigue. So stop even mentioning superhero fatigue. Now, I do like what he talked about, though, in terms of like the story. And just doing, see, because what he was basically saying, from what I could hear, it gets tiring when people get formulaic. If you just keep following the same pattern over and over and over again, and you keep doing the same things over and over again, that is tiring. But I would also argue that's making a bad movie because part of making a movie is you want to communicate something. You want to present something to the audience, but you also want to do it in a unique way that they haven't had before. So if everybody's, let's say, I don't know, if everybody's going serious, maybe you go lighthearted. If everybody's going super lighthearted and corny, maybe you go more dramatic. Like you want to mix it up and keep the audience in mind because that's how that fatigue happens. I've told y'all, I've just saw somebody was saying, like, man, E man, your critiques a lot of uh, about some of these movies are sounding very like there's a pattern. I'm like, yeah, the pattern so far that's been plaguing superhero movies is the shift in tone, and the shift in tone within a respective franchise is off. You cannot sit here and go, we're going to have part one be 40% comedy, part two going to be 45% comedy, and then part three is going to be 80% comedy. It it might not work that way. Or you can't go, all right, well, we're going to have part one be serious, and then part two, we're going to make that a comedy, Aquaman. Like, it's not, when you change it up like that, it doesn't work. Now, if you come out the bat like that, if that's the way you start, like Deadpool, Deadpool comes out, boom, it's like 90% comedy. Second movie, 90% comedy. Third one is probably going to be 90% comedy. That's okay because our expectations are leveled and we know what to see and what to expect when we get in there. Now, one thing, let's say Deadpool could do, it could go serious and that'd be fine, but you can't go from like serious to comedy. Now, the one exception, I would say, is Thor Ragnarok. Thor Ragnarok was probably the one that movie that, like, you had two serious movies and then you went real comedic. But the problem is, and the reason why that didn't really um, count, I think, as, like, uh, I I think that's more of an exception and not the rule. It's because the bar was so low. Them Thor movies were so bad, they had to shake it up. They had to do anything, anything that wasn't a mess to make it better. So that's kind of what happened. You know, they, they that worked. But that, again, like I said, that was an isolated incident. It didn't work for Ant-Man. It didn't work for Shazam. It <laughs> Apparently, it looks like that's where Aquaman is going. I, I think that's a mistake. 
So I agree with James Gunn in terms of saying that, like, yeah, we can't keep doing the same stuff no matter how much action is in there. Because I've told y'all this, too. Action does not matter. Like, action is a nice topper right it's it's the frosting on the cake it's it's the little you know sprinkles and stuff it's good but it's not filling you don't go in there being like oh let me just get the topping and that's it right the story the character that's the foundation that's the basis and if you don't have that and if you substitute the story for stupid cheap jokes just to get the audience to laugh modok you're not gonna you're not gonna win out so I agree with him on that front, um, but I don't agree that it's a superhero fatigue thing. Um, that's just not really the case, like, at all. Um, he goes on to say, let's see. Uh, oh, this was about uh, the DC roles and whether Chris Pratt should play uh, uh, Booster Gold. It says fans are specifically pushing for Chris Pratt to play Booster Gold, who is a charming rogue-type hero who time-traveled from the future and while the actor hasn't discussed it with Gunn, Pratt says, if James thought I was right for it, then you know I would have to consider it. Okay, that's cool. Personally, I think, um, I do think that Chris Pratt would be perfect for uh, uh, Booster Gold. Like, he could play that role very, very well. Um, I would have no problem with that. I'd have no problem. Um, what else here? Uh, Gunn also talked about what he learned from Guardians. He said, I learned so much from making these movies, but it's not like Superman is going to have exactly the same vibe as a Guardians movie. It's actually quite different. Well, sir, I'd hope so. Like, we've already had an emo Superman. You know, like, that's not... No, thank you. No, thank you. Give us somebody uplifting inspiring um you know something give me a reason to go back to the theater you know give me i'm not saying tap into christopher reeve uh uh vibes but you got to give me something else because right now guardians is not really um guardians doesn't look all that uh uh uplifting it looks kind of sad everybody like oh man he finna kill rocket oh man somebody gonna die oh man it's the end of the team oh man this is like it that's looking like real emotional. I'd hope Superman had a different vibe. Please. Um he does go on. He has some more here to say. He says I really want Marvel to keep making good movies. I think it's really hard in the wake of the blip. There's this worldwide universe-wide event that happened and in truth everybody would be stark raving mad at this point. So it's hard to write stories in the wake of that which is why the Guardians movies have been easier because they're set outside of that a little bit. How are the Guardians set outside of the blip when this happened across the entire universe? Like, everyone was affected. Everyone. Now, I agree. It's definitely difficult to write about post-blip because in my opinion, Marvel has messed up by not talking about and showing us what happened during the blip. You have five years, five years of just stuff happening. And all we heard was there was chaos. We heard that society was upside down. We heard all these things, but we have yet to ever see any of it. Not one Disney Plus show could go in and be like, this was the blip. Everything was weeks after, months after. And I get it. You wanted to catch up. But I'm like, there was a lot of story that could have been told. I don't know. Maybe even Wakanda. How they lost half a day people and their king for five years. Five years. What y'all do during that time? I'm not going to get started. I'm not. Um, Anywho, that's all for uh, James Gunn and his um, and his interview. Um, But y'all let me know what you think about it um, in the comments down below.
Thank you so much for watching. This was just a segment of one of my live chats, and if you're interested in joining in on the next one, be sure to subscribe and turn on your notifications for more. I've got more videos and reviews to do for you all, and until next time, I'll see you all later.